What is happening everybody? It's CJ here from Dream Diecast Cars and today I'm going to be doing a review of this Mercedes-Benz A-Class made by Nora. Now I do want to talk about a few things before I get into this review. First off, if you would like to see an unboxing of this diecast car, you can click this annotation which is covering my face. Okay, get out of here. Next, uh, I just want to say that a lot of you guys have been asking me about the 1,000 subscriber special, so I have some exciting news. Uh, I just picked out the car I'm going to use. I'm not going to tell you guys. It's going to be a surprise, uh, but I just picked out the diecast car. So uh, Bernardo and I are going to do it together. We're going to start shooting it next week, and it will be out the week after. So get excited because that is going to be awesome. Uh, no, Edward Stepanian, it was not the Dodge Viper, because I actually really like that car, and it's not even mine. Uh, next, there's this awesome guy called Diecast Lee on Facebook that I forgot to mention in the last video, who gave me a ton of likes on my Facebook page, so I now have like 130. He gave me probably like 100, or at least close to 100. But thanks to him, I did break the 100 mark, so thank you very much, Diecast Lee. You are awesome. And uh, I told him I was going to give him a shout-out. He said it wasn't even necessary. So just a, a great guy, but he totally deserved the shout-out. So thank you so much. And I'm not going to bore any of you guys anymore. Let's get right into this review. Now, one of the things that I would like to say about this die-cast car is that I think the paint color is just beautiful. This matte gray color is uh, absolutely gorgeous. Just completely makes the car. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the front of this die-cast car. And we will start with the lights, which are replicated very nicely. The, uh, the plastic is extremely clear, looks very good, made out of a nice hard plastic, which does not feel flimsy. All the detailing in the inside is done nicely, and the bulb, uh, I think, looks really good. Move along to the center of the front of this die-cast car, and you will see... Uh, this logo, as you know, or as you probably know at least, uh, Mercedes usually have two logos, and the bigger one, uh, the bigger three-pointed star on the front, is done very nicely. Looks just like the ones on the real car, with this sort of covering over it, just like the ones have on the real ones. <clears throat> and the black behind it, with the very metally looking three-pointed star, looks I mean, it just looks almost too good for words. just looks perfect to the ones on the real diecast car. If only they had done that for the logo up here, which is just a cheap sticker, which kind of makes me mad. I mean, it's not even put on well. The sticker itself seems kind of nice because they're, like, the three-point star pops out a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry about my little voice and my, uh, me clearing my throat. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the sticker, it's nice for a sticker, but first off, it should not be a sticker. I mean, the car was not cheap. And uh, second, if you're going to put a sticker on, at least have one that's good enough quality to not keep falling off. Look at the grills on this diecast car, and you will see that it is done pretty nicely. Sure, it's not perforated, so the holes aren't actually real holes. But it is indented, so they look very realistic. Then just another little quick thing, the license plate is done nicely with the... Uh, lettering on it which says a class uh looks very good looks like what you would see in a dealership then sticking to dream diecast cars tradition we will move along to the side of this diecast car and start by checking out the wheels which look very good on this diecast car uh first off i just love how i love the type of wheels that they decided to put on this diecast car really does look nice uh but when you do dive a little bit closer into it you can see some problems like the fact that this sticker <clears throat> right here, it should be lined up, I think, because this is how the wheel should look straight up and down like this. But the sticker is kind of, the logo's off to the side. It's the same sticker that they used on the front, but with it staying on right here, this one seems to be staying on much better, really feels and looks very nice. So the only reason I'm really complaining about this sticker is that it's falling off, which is a huge no-no. It really should never do that. Look really close, and you will see that the brake discs move through the calipers as they should, which is extremely realistic. Another thing you will notice on the side of this die-cast car are these uh, nice-looking 
rear view mirrors, which are done pretty well, and then the extremely realistic looking door handles. Now we can move along to the back of this diecast car where we will start by checking out the lights. The lights are done very nicely with a very good looking red plastic over them, a red clear plastic, which is once again just like on the front of this diecast car done nicely, not flimsy at all and very realistic and glassy looking. Then on the inside you will see detailing, which are sculpted to look like the lights on the real car, with these little LEDs which go across, which look bang on to the real one. The logo is done nicely, as it holds true to the real car, and pops out. The license on the back of the car also sports the nice looking A-Class lettering. Then look lower down, and you will see the extremely nice looking exhausts. They do not have the chromed backs, so they look perfect and very realistic. And then the uh, little grill on the bottom is done uh, the same as the ones on the front. Not really perforated, but indented, so they look pretty realistic. Now we can check out the engine on this diecast car. And uh, something nice about this model is that it has a little button on the bottom, which helps you pop the hood. I really wish all model cars had this, so let's see. If you can see it right there, it's very hard to see, which is good, because it's easy to feel, but it's not easy to see, so the model car still looks very realistic, so you press it, pops up the hood a little bit, and then it's very easy to open it up. That's a big complaint with some model cars, uh, that the hoods are hard to open. Uh, then when you look on the inside, the A-Class has a pretty plain engine, but the, I think that they could have done it more realistically. The engine block looks nice, and some of these little details on the outside look good, but this little side right here, and I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me try to get in the light more. Uh, this just looks really plain, like they could have done it more. They should have added a little bit of wiring and stuff. This side looks a lot better than this side, in my opinion. Another complaint with the engine is that it has no depth. Sure, from the way that you guys see it, it might look pretty good, you know. You've got these main little components. Sure, there are none of the little wirings that you would get on more expensive diecast cars, but it looks pretty good. But then, what you guys can't really see on the camera is that you look down a little bit and it looks very plain. There's no depth at all. Now we can move along to the trunk of this diecast car, and one problem I have with it is this big panel gap right here. Looks very unrealistic, and you can find it on both sides of the back of this diecast car. When you look inside the trunk, you will notice that it does sport felt down lower there. I'm sorry, the lighting's kind of bad today. Uh, but there's a nice layer of felt right there. There's not really too much to see, so you guys aren't missing too much. And then you've got this little uh, uh, thing up here which prevents people from seeing into the trunk. But that's about all. And, you know, after all, it is just a trunk. So now with all that stuff out of the way, we can delve into the most interesting part of most diecast cars, which is the interior. And this diecast car definitely does hold up to standard. The steering wheel is from Mercedes Sport Package with the three-prong steering wheel. Then you have all the air vents, which look pretty realistic, and the dials back there. The sides of the doors look very nice. With all the little buttons down here, you've got the door handle over here, which looks very nice. I'm saying that way too much. Then down lower, you can see the foot pedals uh, look like they're made of real metal. And then this diecast car has felt, which is very nice and very real. Look on the passenger side, and you will see more very realistic looking air vents. You will see the sat nav screen, which looks once again perfect. Down low, you will see some buttons for the radio, and then even lower, you will see the little dials for the aircon. Once again, the passenger side has felt, as you would expect. And if you look really carefully, I know this is kind of hard for you to see, you will see that the seats have the little stitching, which makes them look like they're made of real leather. Then when you look uh, below the doors, you will see the door sill, uh, which looks very nice. I can't tell if it's metal or a sticker, so... If I can't tell, then that's a good sign, because if it's metal, then it's nice that they use metal. But if it's a sticker, then it's an amazing sticker, and I mean, that's just good quality. 
and it's kind of hard to see like this, but it does have Mercedes-Benz inscribed in it. Now with the front of the interior out of the way, let's take a look at the back. Which is replicated very nicely. Once again, the back includes felt, as it should. Just like on the front, the seats have the little stitching, if you can see it. And then the side of the doors are done nicely. With You've got this little pattern, which makes it look and feel very realistic. The door handle is carved perfectly into the door, just like the one on the real di on the real car. And then right there, you've got a little pocket, just like the real car would have in its door. So now on to the ratings. And keep in mind that you can find this diecast car for only $100 online. Now, to some of you beginning collectors, that may sound like a lot of money. But for this quality, it really isn't. This diecast car is definitely auto art quality, and yes, you can find some auto art diecast cars for $100, but usually they're $150 to $175 for the average auto art. So, uh, something that you don't usually see here on Dream Diecast Cars, both ratings are going to be the same for this. The rating without price and the rating including price. Both are going to be A's, and that is because the price is uh, a very good price and the quality is very good. So, without price at all, it wouldn't be an A+, plus, obviously, but it would still be an A. And since the price is so low, um, it's definitely an A because, you know, sometimes if you have a really expensive car uh, that's A without the price, you can see me rating it as a, like a B or even a C with the rating with price just because it's so expensive. But this diecast car definitely is not. You can find it for a very good price. Well, everyone, that's all for this Model Car Monday. Thank you all for watching. And as I said, get excited because the 1,000 subscriber special will be coming to you guys very soon. In the next coming weeks, uh, I'm going to be filming it very soon. And I will be announcing which diecast car I'm going to be using sometime midweek. So I will see you then. Goodbye, everyone.